Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy. Remember it so you don't have to. The last video game I ever played all the way through was Super Mario Bros. Wii. And before that, it was Metroid Prime 2 on the GameCube. That's an entire system later. That's not to say I don't dabble in a little Mario Kart, Marvel vs. Capcom 3, or at my most embarrassing, recording myself playing the Michael Jackson experience in my pajamas, which you are not going to see. I bring this up to give you some idea of where I'm coming from, that I did play a lot of video games growing up, but recently I've kind of fallen out of touch, and that I still try to keep a little on top of things by being a casual gamer here and there. I bring this up because it's important to know my background when I ask a question that's been circulating the past few years, are video games art? Now on the one hand, this is a stupid question as you could easily say, of course it's art. Practically anything can be art. Just look at the definition. The expression or application of human creative skill and imagination, typically in a visual form such as painting or sculpture, or works produced by such skill and imagination. So hell, even the picture you did of a horsey when you were five years old technically counts as art. But I think what people really mean when they ask this question is, are video games high art? Will they be remembered? Are they timeless? Do they say something relevant about life or humanity that will be relevant years later? That's what people are really trying to get down to. I must admit, I didn't really think too hard about this subject matter until I played the game Metroid Other M. Despite all the hype being built around it, the game pissed off a great number of fans and gamers. But not for the same reasons that it would have 20 years ago. The biggest complaint was that Samus, the badass bounty hunter and star of one of Nintendo's biggest franchises, has now been reduced to an overly emotional, yapping drama queen with dialogue more like a soap opera than a space opera. To say fans were pissed was an understatement. But when it came down to the actual gameplay itself, people didn't seem to have that big a problem with it. Of course, some people didn't enjoy the playing part, but the focus of the criticisms was how poorly they represented the character and the story. When did this happen? Nobody used to question the motivations of a plumber going after a princess, or the storyline of two guys with guns stopping an alien invasion. But clearly, much more is expected now out of video games, because the medium itself has naturally evolved. But many critics out there still declare that's just a modern, updated version of this. In my opinion, the best way to understand the evolution of the craft is by comparing it to another craft that many people argued for years wasn't art, movies. For a long time, many art critics declared film as just a means of escape and entertainment, and nothing else. But as the art form advanced more and more, we saw filmmakers take chances by challenging audiences with new ways of telling stories and expressing ideas. Films could be disturbing, thought-provoking, enlightening, even breaking the bonds of the three-act structure and just expressing motion, dreams, or the subconscious. Because of this, it is very hard nowadays to find people who don't, in some form or another, see the possibility of film making great art. Regardless, the question remains, do video games have the same capacity? Well, many would argue nowadays that video games are just a cheap imitation of movies. That they're trying to cash in on a lot of the unique elements of film without actually making a film. And in many respects, they're correct. There's no doubt movies make big money, and the more game makers can make their games look similar to movies, the more people will get the impression that they're actually playing a movie, which is a very attractive idea seeing how people are attracted to movies already. So does that mean video games are just movies light? Are they just advanced versions of Dragon's Lair where footage tells you where to go and if you don't follow you just lose a turn? There's no denying that some, if not many games, are very much like that. So how can games be expected to evolve as an art form if it's just a watered-down version of another art form? Well, games do have a very distinct difference over movies, music, paintings, and other forms of art. And that difference is choice. For the most part, you can't decide where a movie, a book, or a piece of music goes. It's finished when it's finished, and you observe it from there. But video games by design are dependent on different outcomes. And true, there are some pieces of art and literature where the choice of the observer plays a big part, but in video games, that's not just a small part of the process, it's the majority of the focus. Because of this, we create a medium where not only are they allowed to experiment with choice, but they're actually expected to. And when you're expected to produce more possibilities, you're expected to experiment more, take risks more, and generally find out how many outcomes can be created. Sure, most of them are very simple, as in avoid getting hit by something or you'll die, but how about the games that create new worlds to explore, new stories to create, 
and not just from the creator anymore, but from the observer. Few would disagree that much of art is about the creation, and this is one of the rare mediums that allows the viewer to make just as much great art as the artist who created it does. It isn't just the graphics and the technology that's evolving, it's the unique interaction between the player and the game. And yes, there are games that try to serve as nothing but mindless entertainment, and there are games that try to be complex and interesting, but instead come out as predictable and boring. But how is that any different from bad art or bad movies? They're all trying to tap into something that makes you understand or celebrate the human condition. Even something like Transformers, yeah, I know, easy target, but nonetheless. Something as simple as Transformers is trying to get across what we value as good human ethics, right down to the very basic good versus evil. Now, does that make it something that's going to be relevant and studied years later? Probably not. But at the same time, you don't call an entire artistic medium a failure because some bad art is popular. Now, if the question is, have video games reached that level of high art, that's a little bit more debatable. As a casual gamer, I don't know if I've seen that landmark that's the game equivalent of the Seventh Seal or 2001, but I would make the argument that some have come close. This may sound strange, but something like The Sims, as much as I personally don't like playing it, toils with the idea of living your life in a world almost identical to ours. But once again, the choices you make in the environment, I think can say much about how people live their lives in the real world and in their fantasy world. Just the experience in what you do and how you play, and how it contrasts to how you react in the real world. That's a very different and interesting form of artistic expression, whether you realize you're doing it or not. And again, the genuine art comes from the user, not necessarily the creator. I think the same can be said for games like Skyrim or World of Warcraft, or any of these games where you're allowed not to just go on adventures, but live a life any way you want to live it, in a completely different reality. I think you could also make the argument that games like Bioshock Infinite, though not allowing as much choice as other games, create some very powerful commentary while also being a visual marvel. But like I said, as a casual gamer, I can't act like I'm the biggest expert on the subject. Maybe that big game changer is out there and I just haven't seen it yet. Maybe it just hasn't gotten the public attention that it deserves. Or maybe the big game changer is one of these games and the reveal of time will slowly show that. But what I do know is the possibilities are there. And they're being experimented with day after day as the medium continues to grow. It reminds me of when people used to say that comic books weren't high art. And that they were nothing but childish nonsense. I'll admit, I used to kind of be on that boat too. But then groundbreaking works like Mouse came out, and Watchmen, and Persepolis, and a lot of other great works that said, hey, we don't care what you think. We're going to prove that there is a medium here that can be as powerful, thoughtful, provoking, and emotionally stimulating as any other great work of art. And sure enough, the medium is much more respected now than it was before. An argument has even risen that comic book heroes are the new Greek myths being written from so many different points of view, but still being the center of value that popular culture looks up to. Perhaps the reimagining of video game characters with their legends and quests could be working its way up to the same page. So, in answer to our video game's art, or high art, I would make the argument that if people don't see that the answer is yes, they will. If a game doesn't exist that'll sway you over, the possibilities that continue to evolve with technology inevitably have to. And yes, many great people I admire, like Roger Ebert, declared they never have been and never will be art. And while I respectfully disagree, I don't see him or anyone who thinks similar any less intelligent or influential. I simply ask that people who think it cannot evolve at the very least keep their minds open to the roads that can be traveled with the medium. That if you think video games are not high art now, be aware that they certainly have the ability to be so in the future. Many evolving artists and mediums have been shunned in the past, and much of their progress came from not what they weren't, but what they could be. And it's hard to see how the evolution of this to this is any different from the evolution of this to this. Yes, there will always be mindless games for escapism in the same way there will always be mindless movies for escapism. But if that is the full extent of the possibilities you can see in video games, I humbly challenge you to stop, start over, and play again. I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember it so you don't have to! And speaking of mindless escapes... Yeah, you've earned it.
Well, we got a lot of people asking, hey, where's Suburbanites and Kikassi on DVD? Well, now's your chance to pre-order the reorder once again. That's right, shipping will begin July 1st. And on top of that, we have copies left of the Nostalgia Critic Reloaded DVD. If you order in the next two weeks, I will personally sign them for you. But hell with that, wouldn't you like to know the DVDs you're buying are going to a good cause? Well, they are. We're going to use that money to help fund our charity drive this summer. The charity is for the One Step at a Time camp, and you can help support us to make this charity drive happen. Buying great entertainment, going to a great cause, what's not to like? Well, okay, you don't have to like bees, but they're not a part of this 